Hello, it's Michael Watts here and welcome to this, the second episode of my album recording diary. Uh, I'd like to start this video by saying thank you to everybody who responded to the first video in this series. Uh, it was great to get your comments and uh, questions. Uh, I do read them all and respond uh, as fully as I can. Um, so yes, please do keep them coming and uh, it's always good to hear from you. Now, uh, the past few days have been spent listening to the results of a recording session that happened last week. In the first video I spoke a little bit about the orchestration uh, that I'd been hearing in my head for this record, uh, in particular um, on tracks like Between Streets and The Nine Bar Blues, where I really wanted some double bass, onomatopoeic double bass, and uh, drums in the form of a small jazz kit. I was <laughs> perhaps uncharacteristically evasive about who I wanted to play. I didn't want to mention any names uh, simply because I didn't want to jinx it and I wasn't sure if, uh, if it would be possible. However, last week uh, the stars and schedules aligned and I found myself back in Surrey Studios with uh, the producer Jack Vasiliu and uh, in addition two of my favourite musicians I'll let them introduce themselves. Hey, my name's Rex Horan. I'm Evan Jenkins. And we are the Skinnies. <laughs> yes. And we've been today in this uh, beautiful studio, Surrey Studios, recording with Jack and with Michael Watts for Michael Watts' second record. And we did two tracks. Yeah, we did two, yeah. yeah. We, we did Between the Streets and we did uh, Nine Bar Blues. Peculiar structure, the Nine Bar Blues. Yeah, it's like one bar more than you'd expect. Exactly. Or three bars less oh, okay. than what you also might <laughs> yeah, expect. Yeah. So we had, a very, we had a very nice time making this record. Yeah. Put down some, some drums and some double bass. Yeah, drums and double bass. And uh, actually, it's, it's a real pleasure to do. Um, we haven't played with Michael for maybe three years, I think. Something like that. Maybe even longer. Might be. But it's very nice to see him again. When was the last time? Was it the Royal Festival Hall or something like that? It might have been the Festival Hall we yeah. played. That was a good show. Uh -huh. Yeah. But this is even better. So yes, as Rex mentioned, one of the last times we played together was at Royal Festival Hall as part of the celebration of the music of Bert Jansch. And Bert, as many of you will know, was a, a huge influence for me. So it was a real uh, pleasure and a privilege to, to take part in that. So we had arranged a 10 o'clock start for the session with... Uh, aiming for an 11.30 downbeat, so starting the recording itself at 11.30 once we finished setting up. I'd spoken to Jack and asked if uh, he wanted to try putting the bass and drums together in the live part of his studio, and he said that he'd actually prefer to put the drum kit in the booth so he'd be able to get the sound that he was looking for. Um, and, you know, that's a, a great example when you've got somebody who knows their space, knows their, uh, knows their kit and microphones, and most importantly understands what you're looking for. Um, it's a golden opportunity to just shut up and go, right, great, smile and, uh, and nod. And that's, that's exactly what I did. So we had uh, Evan in the booth. He was mic'd up in a, a variation of the Glenn Johns drum miking. Uh, technique. I think Jack may have squeezed a, a cheeky gefell in there as well uh, at some point. Um, Rex on double bass uh, usually uses a, a DI to, uh, to plug in as well just as a, a sort of safety net to, uh, alongside the microphones. I'd asked if maybe he wanted to use a, a little DPA, a 4060, um, instead and he actually had with him um, a, a DPA 4099, which is a, a sub-miniature uh, hypercardioid shotgun. Tiny little thing. It's really ingenious, the little clamp that DPA have made, uh, which clips onto the strings of the instrument, and then you can point the mic directly at the soundboard. Um, then Jack added uh, Gefell M300, which uh, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you'll know I absolutely adore. Uh, just a great small capsule condenser uh, microphone, it's cardioid, but you don't really get much in the way of proximity effect, which is why I love it for close miking. And uh, that was pointed towards the fingerboard of the instrument. And finally, uh, he set up uh, Coles 4038, uh, 
ancient technology there, the uh, ribbon mic. Now, I tend to be a little wary of Coles um, as the only mic in the room, certainly for the, the sort of acoustic guitar that I like to record. They're fantastic for strings on their own, but uh, they do lose a little bit of high-end detail. But with the combination of the Coles, the Gefell, and the DPA together, Jack, Jack just managed to get a, a sound that was literally 3D. It was just beautiful. And, and the same on drums as well. So he did a, a fantastic job. Now, if I'd been playing the acoustic guitar during these sessions, there would have been all sorts of bleed through the microphones and it really would have got messy. So instead, I was on electric guitar, my Gretsch uh, White Falcon, uh, DI'd straight into the desk. Uh, I had prepared demos, um, but I didn't want the guys to be playing along to something pre-recorded. You know, I wanted to join in and make sure that the, uh, the performances were as dynamic and, and organic as possible. So uh, there I was on electric guitar. We were arranged, I mean there were three of us, so we were obviously we arranged in a sort of a V shape. Evan was in the booth, Rex was just outside, and I had eye contact with Rex at all times. If I needed to uh, guide Evan at any point, I could do so by waving the headstock of my guitar uh, <laughs> through the window um, in the appropriate rhythm. So that was slightly weird, but it did work. We kicked off with uh, Between Streets, which is a little jazzy shuffle. Rex stayed in standard tuning for this one, and he'd written uh, a gorgeous uh, sort of walking, um, striding, really, uh, bass line, beautiful. And, uh, and Evan played some uh, just really sensitive, beautiful drumming. Um, it was... I've got to say, it was really quite powerful to hear this music brought to life by other musicians for the first time. It, it was a, quite an experience and um, I'm very grateful to the musicianship that the guys brought to this session. Uh, I think the second take ended up, yeah, we, we did one quick run through, looked at the structure and then the second take ended up being the one. Uh, I think Evan dropped in maybe eight bars of ride cymbal, and that was it. Done. Wonderful. Having got between streets in the bag, there was an abrupt change in both tempo and mood as we approached the nine bar blues. Now, I'd always hoped that there was potential in this piece for it to be a really powerful uh, and emotive uh, piece of music. I wasn't prepared for the intensity of what actually happened. Um, both Rex and Evan brought a level of musicianship and feel and understanding to this music that uh, I, I couldn't even have dared hope for. It, it was amazing. It really was. Um, the bar has been set pretty damn high, <laughs> certainly for, for my playing and for the rest of the record. Uh, it was one of those sessions where uh, I think we jammed it through once, and then it was literally first take was perfect in feel and in uh, texture. It was just stunning. I, I emerged blinking at the end of the uh, at the end of the take, very conscious of the fact that I'd gone somewhere, but. I couldn't tell you where. And even now it's difficult to, <laughs> it's difficult to talk about uh, in any way lucidly, um, other than to say it was very powerful, I'm very grateful, and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to, to sharing this music with you. So uh, to that end, um, I'm now going to spend a few days uh, rehearsing the solo acoustic uh, guitar parts, uh, for the record, and uh, I may show you a little bit of that uh, rehearsal uh, time and um, regime with you. And I'm also going to uh, introduce another wonderful musician, a, a very dear friend of mine, who um, has agreed to join me on this record as well, which I'm very excited about. So uh, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned.